Good evening. Uh, welcome to Thursday. And once again, we have a great Make It Alexandria coming up with the always lovely Alisa Kovach of Alexandria Makers Market. Tonight, she is welcoming the lovely Jenna of Passionately Pets, and we will get to see all of her amazing pet products, you know, from anything from retail like t-shirts and pillows to dog treats that are I believe organic and specially made and we also might get to see some pets some adorable little fur friends so you can find Jenna at um, places like the upcoming sidewalk sale pop-up in Del Rey that's happening August 15th at Pat Miller Square and you can also find her regularly at the Old Town North Farmers Market that happens Thursdays from about 3 to 7 so let's welcome Elisa. Hi, thank you so much, Grace. Happy Thursday, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Guys, Make It Alexandria is all about showcasing people right here in our city who are creatives or uh, small business owners in some capacity. And Jenna is kind of both. She has a service-oriented business as well as a product line. So I'm super excited to welcome Jenna of Passionately Pets. Jenna, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, Alexandria. Um, Jenna, th yeah. thank you for joining us. You and I have done a few events together. Everybody always loves your booth because we are such a pet friendly city. Um, tell me a little bit about what inspired you to start Passionately Pets. Well, so we're going to go all the way back to uh, right after I graduated college um, and I was working in marketing in D.C. and like most people who graduate college, just not making enough to pay rent in this area. Um, so I needed a, another job and I answered an ad that was just like, must love dogs. And I was like, that's me. <laughs> um, so I ended up uh, working for a company in DC that um, did pet care. So dog walking and pet sitting. And I did it outside of my um, full-time job hours. And then as the years went on, I advanced in my full-time job. And so I ended up making more money, but also putting in more hours. And I had to um, quit the part-time job. But honestly, I totally got depressed. I did not have any pets at home. And it turns out that I enjoyed seeing other people's pets more than I thought. And it was bringing more joy and lightness and happiness to my life. Um, and so after a year of not doing it, um, I decided, hey, well, why don't I start a business like that since it's clearly something that I really liked. Um, so in 2007, I started Passionately Pets. Um, I started as a one woman operation. Um, I like put ads on Craigslist to get clients. Um, and that's how we started. Um, after about six months, I hired my first employee. Um, after, um, I believe five years, then I got my first general manager. Um, now, uh, almost 14 years later, uh, we I'm first of all, very proud and happy to have made it this far through the pandemic. And um, I'm very proud that I was able to continue supporting my staff and um, didn't have any layoffs um during covid even though um you know our uh demand for services um was down to 10 percent um now it's starting to pick up again on the service side which is really good and we are hiring hint hint if anyone wants to be a dog walker or a pet sitter um but what happened during covid is we needed another revenue stream and I had always had this vision of creating kind of brewery swag for pet owners. Um, I loved like going to a brewery and checking out their shirts, their glassware, their hats. And I loved that like there was this community of people who 
understood what the logos meant and like the little sayings and everything and that it like brought them together into this community. Um, and so when COVID hit, I was like, well, now's the time. Let's focus on that and get it started. Um, and so that's how our shop was born. Um, we created a whole line of apparel and glassware uh, that was all designed by staff members, um, which is really cool. Um, the happiness starts here is on a whole line of glassware. So pint glasses, mugs, um, wine glasses, and a whiskey glass. And happiness starts here is kind of a um, tagline for Passionately Pets in general. So we're bringing happiness, you know, to the pets in our care, but also to the clients who kind of get a stress-free um, vacation or work day, whatever it is. Um, and then, yeah, the love logo that you see right there um, is also like our signature design. Um, we have it on leashes, collars, um, throw pillows, shirts, all sorts of things. Um, and we feel like that encompasses our brand pretty well. Um, and yeah, what else can I tell you? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm actually really, really impressed because I don't think that I realized that the product line of your business has really only been around for about a year and a half. Um, and was yeah. more of a pandemic project. So I kind of really dig that because that's primarily how I know you. Um, yeah, exactly. So so let's then talk about you kind of shifting out of your marketing job and really taking on Passionately Pets full time. I know it began in 2007, but is that when you really made the full jump into this business? Um, I think it took about um, a year and a half before I made it my primary uh, business. I got lucky in that I got an opportunity to work from home before everyone else was doing it. <laughs> and <laughs> so they um, they allowed me to go walk a dog during lunch, um, you know, and they didn't care as long as I got my job done. They were also in a different time zone. So that helped with um, having like business hours for them versus having pet care hours for me. Um, and then, yeah, it took about a year and a half before um, I was busy enough that I couldn't devote time to the marketing job anymore. Um, yeah, which was like a super proud moment for me. Like, oh, don't need this anymore. Also super scary because, oh God, am I making the right decision? And you know, what if I can't support myself on this? <laughs> no, I can only imagine the leap of faith that that took. Uh, anytime you kind of walk out and put yourself out there, it's it's very intimidating. So, um, so I love that this was something that has really been for the last ten plus years, really mm -hmm. supporting you and um, doing something that you're really passionate about. Pun obviously intended, but um, <laughs> and it does um, really support our local community. You know, if you think about how how much people in Alexandria care for their pets and they want the best for them. And so obviously they're, they're going to look after them in ways, you know, to make sure that they're getting the walks that they need while they're at work and getting the care. That's kind of a top notch level service if they're on vacation or out of town. And, and so what does that look like? Are you going into folks' homes? Do you have pe the animals come and stay with you? How does that work? Yeah, so everything that we do is out of the client's home, um, which is good for me because I don't have to um, pay for an office. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> also uh, difficult for, uh, you know, just working out of the home. And as you can see, like behind me, my office is like 100% like retail central and it's kind of taking over the house. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, 
Um, we uh, do dog walking while people are at work, um, as well as pet sitting while people are away. We also do overnight stays um, in the client's home, and we also offer house sitting. So if you don't have any pets, we can do that as well. Um, we have uh, minimums where dogs need to 30 minute visits a day and every other animal needs at least one visit every 24 hours. Beyond that though, everything we do is based off of time. And then um, the customer can create their own schedule based on their own pet's needs. Um, so we have 15 minute visits, 30 minute visits, 60 minutes. Um, and then we have two different overnight services as well. Um, so they can kind of mix and match those um, any way that they see fit that works best for their pet. Um, but we find that um, it really just keeps the pets calmer. They're more comfortable in their own environment. They get to stay with their own schedule. All of their stuff is there. You know, um, the clients don't have to pack up their dog, worry about pick up and drop off or anything like that. Um, so we do everything in their home and um, it works out. <laughs> What is, and what's your service area range? If somebody is watching and thinking, oh, I am actually in the market for that, where would, where's your kind of line of delineation? Absolutely. So our service area includes all of Arlington, and then we do Alexandria Falls Church and Annandale, but we stay inside the Beltway and inside 66. So it kind of makes a nice circle for us. Nobody wants to cross the river. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> the problem you. is that I am the only permanent fixture of the business. And so if I make the service area too big and, you know, we're short staffed or whatever ends up happening, like I have to be willing and able to drive to help those clients out. And if we make it too big, then it kind of makes things impossible. Plus, as you said, this area is saturated with pet lovers. Like we don't even need to go anywhere else. <laughs> what are some of the things that you uh, have kind of learned for owning your business for so long? Um, to be honest, in terms of the people that I work with at events, usually about three to five years is the average span. You're almost double that. So you are double that. What are some of the recommendations that you have for maybe some of the small business owners out there that are, you know, hustling at this point, especially with the pandemic? Yeah, um, my number one advice is like, trust your gut because you you know deep down you know and um every time you know that something bites me in the butt i'm like oh man i knew something like like this was gonna happen and now i've learned that if i get an uneasy feeling about anything or um you know just something rubs me the wrong way i'm like mm, i'm not gonna take that on um which leads me to like, it is okay to say no. Um, a lot of people at the beginning are just like, they're so hungry to get business and they end up doing something that maybe, you know, oh, this, this person lives just outside of the service area. I need a client. I'm going to take them um, or whatever it is, you know, and then down the line, they'll be like, oh, I really wish that I hadn't had that client because now I'm stuck driving an extra 15 minutes to be outside of my service area every day. Um, right. And so, you know, decide what your boundaries are and like stick with them. Um, and yeah, saying no is, is perfectly okay. And you're right. Like as a business owner, I think that's a, actually a very powerful message. And I, I think you hit it on the head where people can say yes, because they're hungry and just trying to, uh, open any doors possible. But I think that what you, you have a very clear vision of what works for you, for your staff, your business. And, and so I think that that's extremely powerful. So great yeah, advice. And even, 
even with that, I feel like, you know, I didn't always have a clear vision. And so, you know, it's okay. You live and learn. So if you discover that something doesn't work, um, you know, it's also okay to change what those rules, limits, boundaries, desires, you know, all of that are. Like your business is a living, breathing thing. Change it. Make it what you want today, not what you wanted five years ago. Oh, that is, that is so true. So very true that your business can kind of grow with you and change as your interests and, and, you know, journey does. And so that's incredibly Mm -hmm. uh, good advice. So kind of in that vein, you know, you took on this more of the product side of things. Are you feeling like, you know, was that your gut saying like, just go for it. Now is the time to try it or you know, you've had a couple year and a half maybe to reflect on it. Is this something that we could see more of from you in the future? Yeah. So um, it's definitely something that I wanted to try. And then when COVID happened, it was like, all right, now is the time to focus on it. Like you have been presented, you know, this gift in disguise to like make this new thing. Um it has been challenging. It's been a lot of work. Um, it's also like morphed into something that I wasn't a hundred percent expecting. Um, because when we started, I just thought it was going to be apparel. Um, then I learned everyone wants toys and treats. And so I was like, Oh, I better stock some toys and treats. Um, so we actually, um, after like two months of having our retail store and doing, um, outdoor uh, events and markets because our store is an e-commerce store. So it's all on our website, uh, which in case you need to know is www.passionatelypets.com slash shop. Um, So that's the only place that you can find us unless you're actually at one of the markets or events that we um, are doing a pop-up at. Um, So I started adding toys, um, and treats to the events because that's what people wanted right then. Um, and then I realized, well, why am I paying someone else, you know, to make treats when we could be making them and providing um, another link into not only like people's homes, but into people's relationships with their pets. Um, mm-hmm. And we wanted to be a bigger part of of connecting pets and their humans um, together. So we um, started our own line of trees, which you can see them hanging out behind me. But also I have like this one is our bestseller. It's the tuna and cheese dog treats um, and cat treats. And that's why people like them because they're good for um, both dogs and cats. Um, I feel like a lot of um, treat makers, especially homemade ones, forget about our feline friends. And we are an all-inclusive company over here. (laughs) Um, Even from the beginning, when I was picking the name of the company, our logo, like I really wanted it not to, you know, exclude any type of animal. Um, And so I thought it was really important to include a cat treat in our line. Um, But all of our treats are homemade, um, you know, stand mixer, measuring out all of the ingredients, rolling them out, and then, you know, baking them until they're dry um, and packaging them up for you guys. Um, They all have human grade ingredients. Um, so you can eat them if you want to. I don't recommend it. There's no salt or sugar in it. So it just tastes like a pretty bland cracker. Um, but you can, if you wanted to, um, we have four different flavors. Um, so we have, um, the tuna and cheese. We have a, the apple cinnamon, um, a peanut butter banana and a oatmeal peanut butter. And then each of the four flavors comes in a big cookie for bigger dogs. And then also in um, the training bite size so that you can use it for training, but also for smaller dogs. So um, everybody can have the perfect cookie for them. (laughs) 
Well, uh, we had an event together last month uh, over at the garden, and that seemed to be a very big hit. People seemed to love those treats, and everybody was taking a bag home with them. So um, it seems like that's a that was a good gut instinct to trust in terms of. Yeah, they've been going that. really well. Um, plus, now that we had like a food item, it opened up farmers markets for us. Um, mm. So uh, we've been doing the Old Town North on Thursdays, but also um, the West End one on Sunday mornings at uh, Ben Brenman Park. Uh, so many dogs in that neighborhood. So that's been <laughs> really well for us. Um, but you also just open more opportunities of where we could set up our market. And yeah, they've been kind of flying off the shelves. <laughs> so could you imagine in 2007 that this is where you were going to the direction that you would end up, that you would have this product retail line, that you would be making your own treats for the dogs? And not that. even close. Um, I was just talking to my husband about this, that um, when I opened, I thought that I was um, trying to get brand recognition, open up a dog daycare. So that was actually my goal. And now I'm all like, oh my God, I would never have a doggy daycare. Um, so it's so funny how everything changes and morphs. And yeah, I mean, I only thought about retail like maybe three years ago. And then, you know, it's actually been um, in fruition now for um, a little over a year. And uh, yeah, I'm telling you, the business is just a living and breathing thing. And we just go where where it takes us. Like, I don't I can't even imagine like what next year will be like. I have no idea, <laughs> but I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that attitude. Just bring it on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've already gone through kind of a very tumultuous year already. So. We've gotten some good uh, exercise and being flexible and on our feet, ready for anything. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so this is just kind of a quirky question. I've got to know, you, you say that you're inclusive of all pets. What are, in terms of, you know, I'm assuming cats and dogs, but what are some of the other animals that you have cared for over the years? Yeah, absolutely. So um, cats and dogs are obviously the norm, even fish are the norm. Uh, but usually people um, have us take care of their fish tanks only if they have another pet in the household. Then it's like, mm -hmm. while you're here, you can also feed our fish. Um, we have a turtle that we take care of regularly. Um, we have a snake in our care right now. Um, I love the small mammals. So um, we have some bee pigs, rabbits. Um, we've had chinchillas in the past, sugar gliders. Um, so yeah, it's pretty fun. Ferrets, I'm like what else? <laughs> birds, we take care of birds too. Um, so yeah, and anything that you have, we pretty much do it. Um, reptiles aren't as popular to need care because they can go longer without needing um, food and they don't really get much attention. Um, but we've taken care of different lizards too. So anything there you got. There is a question <laughs> that has come in and the question is if you care for koi. Oh, sure. Absolutely. I assume that's an outdoor pond. Um, but yeah, everything that we do is based on time. So however much time we need to do the care that's required, like then um, we can do anything that's needed. Um, we have like done, you know, we water the outdoor plants, the indoor plants, we get the mail, we roll the trash cans um, to the curb, we get packages, um, we fill like bird feeders, we feed the deer. So, you know, anything that's needed on the property is included. Well, I mean, that sounds like quite the service, to be honest with you. <laughs> that's quite amazing. Um, we've heard about a few of the farmer's markets where you are regularly there. Maybe it's you or maybe one of your other employees, but Passionately Pets has a booth at these mm -hmm. markets around town. Um, but are there any other special events that are coming up or on your horizon where people can find you 
if they're looking specifically for your treats or your retail? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a couple things coming up. Um, on August 15th, we will be at the uh, Delray Sidewalk Sale pop-up. Um, so 11 to 3 at the Pat Miller Neighborhood Square. Um, super excited about that. I think there's going to be 16 or more vendors um, in the pop-up. And uh, the sales just going on um, all along Mount Vernon Avenue as well as in Old Town. Um, at the end of September, we have um, the autumn market that we're going to do with you guys. So I'm super excited about that at Port City. Um, there it is. So September 26th at um, Port <laughs> City um, parking lot. And I don't know, you want to say anything about the market? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yes. I'll, since we're on the topic, um... You know, we are going back to Port City where it all began uh, pre-pandemic and taking over their parking lot. It will be an outdoor event and it's going to be an amazing time. All Alexandria makers come grab a pint, shop, you know, can't beat that. Uh, good afternoon. So um, that should be exciting. <laughs> um, any other, I didn't mean to kind of bogart here. <laughs> And take it was that. just in the middle. We couldn't ignore the opportunity, right? <laughs> um, and then in October, on a Sunday, October 24th, um, we'd like to invite everybody in the community out um, to the corner of Bellafon and Mount Vernon in Del Rey. We will be celebrating our 14th birthday. Um, so we have a little birthday potty, P-A-W-T-Y. <laughs> um, and we will have our whole shop set up, but there will be other um, pet friendly vendors. Um, it's going to be a family friendly event. So um, it'll be right before um, Halloween. So we'll have a pet costume contest. Um, we should have some live music, a um, food truck. There's going to be some bakery items items um, available. There's going to be an agility course by Holistic Hound. Um, there will be, I believe, maybe some nail trims from the Posh Dog Wash. So tons of Alexandria um, businesses will all be involved and it'll just be a good time. So mark your calendars for October 24th um, from 12 to 3. That's so exciting. I First of all, I'm Congratulations on 14 years of business, but Thanks. also what a fun way to celebrate and mark that anniversary. I think that's such a fun way to do that. Yeah, we like to just bring everybody together. It's in this business, since we go directly to the client's home, it's really hard to get that human connection and get everyone in the same space. So even staff members to get to hang out together and clients to come, plus just bringing the community together. So um, it's pretty fun. Well, um, I think that you kind of hit the nail on the head. You have a perfect business. You're in the perfect city for owning a pet service and retail business. Um, but it, it, you obviously are an integral part of this community and serve a really important need. So I know that there are many, many families uh, that are very thankful to have you in this town. So yeah, I'm glad that um, we also try and give back to help um, pets in need in our community. So a um, dollar from every item sold from our shop does get um, donated back to the community. Um, right now, our beneficiary um, is Lost Dog and Cat Rescue Foundation. Um, but we're super proud um, that having the shop has allowed us to raise money for local organizations. Um, it's something we've been wanting to do for a really long time but with the services there just isn't much wiggle room um in order to do that so um it was something that was a goal of starting to sell the retail as well i love that i love that thank you so much for giving back and um and i'm really excited to see how this you know, just becomes another part of the journey and, and where you are in another two or three years and what else might be a part of the Passionately Pets, you know, chain. So it's amazing. So congratulations, Jenna, and thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you so much for having me.
You guys, I hope that you will go and check out Jenna. And first of all, go to Passionately Pets and, and check out her retail um, uh, merchandise. It's so cute and it's so perfect for, or perfect, if I would. Yeah, I did that. Uh, for, for this city. And make sure that you've marked your calendar to go and see her in person around town. So that's so fun. And if you need a pet sitter, I think you know who you should be calling. So um, you guys, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for supporting local whenever possible. Make it Alexandria and go be the good news in someone's life.